All right, my first craft project I'm going to be representing is this tea light candle holder. And this is actually made from a recycled metal soda can. Now this is strictly an adult craft project and that is primarily because the tools that are used to make it, like my X-Acto knife kit here, and the edges on these aluminum cans are very dangerous. You can easily slip and cut yourself with this or get cut by this and it's just like getting a paper cut so 10 times worse. I actually have managed to avoid it but yeah it's definitely not a craft for kids. This is strictly for adults. Um, at the end of the project you could probably take aluminum foil and go over the edges of these to make it easier but the whole point of cutting out the hole in the back is to make it where you can easily get the candle in and out. And the purpose of this is like these are really good for maybe if you want to add a little decoration to your summer barbecue. You know, want to set some of these out on the back porch while you're having dinner, make things look nice. That's what this is for. But this is the end result of what I'm going to be working on. And that and this is how we're going to start fresh. The first thing you're going to want to do is take off your tabs here because that's just going to be in your way. Now the reason this craft is so easy because you know if you already have cans at home you already have that at disposal and the only thing you need is a tea light which you probably you know if you already have and then this would probably be the only specialty tool there that you would need but I know for a fact that Dollar Tree is selling these right now and all you need is a basic exacto knife and uh, they sell those for a dollar of course. Um, I would recommend any safety handware you have. I don't know, uh, regular craft gloves would help. Maybe if you have a relative who does butchery and they have those uh, special butcher's chain <laughs> gloves. This is honestly probably one of the most nerve-wracking crafts I've done because you have to be extremely careful not to cut yourself. <laughs> I would recommend maybe if you had like a nail and a hammer to go along the line here and start pre-holes because cutting it's fairly easy it's just working your knife into the actual aluminum that causes stress so like if you could pre-start holes around the outer edge that'd be a good idea i also had a permanent marker to go over and make lines for the first can but then i found that I just after a while i was going by my own guidelines by eye because some of them just didn't fit right so this one i'm just going to completely freehand and the difference between this can and the other can is that this one is shorter. The other one, uh, I forget the ounces, but this is your basic can here. So we're going to start, and we're kind of making the lines for the strips on a slant. Kind of like the lines on your barbershop poles. I'll make these a little bit thicker than last time. As you can see, it takes a little bit of uh, an angling to get the middle to go through. Like I said, if you're a little bit squeamish, I would not recommend this craft. <laughs> but, uh, they, they look really great when you're done with them. And the metal safe is burning in there. I would avoid the top of the pan when it's lit because if not, you will burn a finger because they can get hot. But I, I consider this a really good recycling project because you're making use of something that you either want to throw away or maybe recycle. But this you can make a cute little decoration for the project. And at the same time, you're getting good use out of things. So you could either call it a recycle project or a upscaling or repurposing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using a lot of actual repurposing of daily craft projects in the future. Things that may not have previously had a purpose, but definitely you can get useful things out of them. I decided to do this one first because I actually saved a lot of aluminum brew cans and I really wanted to get them used ahead of time. So, so far, I pretty much have a evenly spaced strips here. This one's going to be the widest one. 
So this is probably where I'm going to cut out the strip in order to make my little handhold here in order to get my candles in and out. And as I said before I started, you can always take some sandpaper or maybe if you have a um, rubbery tool and go around the edges if it makes you feel more comfortable to take the sharp edges off. Or, you know, I don't think you could use anything. But yeah, I'm not too particularly worried about mine because mine's just a project right now. If I had to worry about them being around, you know, people, I would probably go through the extra effort to sand them down. But for purposes right now, just leaving them as is is okay. See, this one's actually going a lot faster than the first one I made. You gotta be careful with that little jagged edge there. So we can get that one out. And if I haven't mentioned before, you're definitely going to want to clean these out ahead of time or you're going to have a really sticky mess on your hands and table and tools. That was dangerous. <laughs> and just throw your extra little piece of metal away unless of course you want to use it for another craft. And now we're going to clean up our little watery mess where this hat completely dried out. Alright, so now, now that we got our little opening hole here where we're going to fit our tea candles in, we're going to try to push out the outer edges here very carefully because we're going to give it a little squeeze to push it down into its lamp shape. Just a little squeeze down, not much trying to be problematic. Give everything a nice little squeeze, and we're probably going to flex things out a little bit, you know, to make sure everything bends down properly. And as I said before, unless you intend to sand down your edges on this, you really need to do this very carefully, or with a pair of pliers, or you're going to come away with cut up fingers. But this one's about done, and we can pop our candle in here in a second, and, um, get a look at what this one's going to look like, because like I said, this one was a lot easier and I think it's going to look a lot better than my first test one did because those were made out of taller cans than this and see so you're even getting a bigger doorway here for your candle because of this can being your average size can. I <laughs> I would wonder what a, what an Arizona sweet tea cans would look like as one of these. Those things would be ginormous. Okay, so I got everything nice and fluffed out. Kind of looks like the Chinese hanging lanterns, but of course I will not hang these. But let's see, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now you can take your rag here, and if you have any leftover moisture, just try to wipe that out. The candle is going to take care of it regardless. And all that's left to do, you know, just test it out. Slide your little candle in here. Yeah, sometimes you have to get it, like, fix it, because as you're cutting and bending, things get a little off mark, so you take a look at it and see where you like it to be, so things get a little wonky. All right, now let's try to light it and see what we got here. Oh, takes a while for the new ones to get them lit. There we go. All right, we're lit. And that is your little recycled, upscaled soda can lantern like i said these are great for putting outside when you're having a barbecue or if you're just outside playing you know taking a break and relaxing and um it goes without saying you know never leave a lit candle unattended and always put your tools back in their proper places especially out of small hands but this is the soda can lamp candle holder and I hope you enjoyed, and I will be back Monday with another craft. Take care. Stay safe.